No Film School's coverage of NAB 2018 is brought to you by Black Magic Design, creating revolutionary solutions for film, post-production, and television. Adorama, the world's only full-service destination for photo, video, and electronics. And My Road Reel, the world's largest short film competition is back. Register now at myroadreel.com. Hey, this is Charles Hayne from No Film School at NAB Show 2018. I'm at the Lightbridge booth with Jacob. Hey, Jacob, how's it going? Hi, hi, good. All good. Happy to, yeah, it's amazing to talk to you. Great. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to talk totally. to you as well. So, yeah. all right, so first off, the overall theory is yeah. usually you put up a light, then you like silk it, then you flag it, because yeah. silk it, you spill everywhere. Yeah. I look at behind the scenes setups on a Haneke yeah. movie. I don't see a lot of silks. I don't yeah. see a lot of flags. Yeah, exactly. What's going on? As the magic behind the whole thing is, like, the whole reflectors are built in a way that they distribute light, diffused light, controllable. So it is like reverse engineering. You take away the flags, take away the frames, look at the light, say something's not right there, and that's what we had to fix, basically. So you take any light source you want to do. Obviously, we're here at the BBNS booth, so we really like the 4.7, just to have mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so right here, if you look at this little thing we did here, it's so hard at a show to talk about light and shadow, right? So basically, what happens is, is you take a reflector, take it in your hand, and just think about this box here being a room, right? So you've got a light down here on the floor, and then you kind of bring it in, and then you light up the room inside. So if what you're seeing what's happening right here is you don't have cherry pickers, you don't have heavy kind of stuff mounting the reflectors outside. It's a really lightweight system. So uh, you've got more control of what the light's doing. Why is that so? That's because usually it's say, okay, we use cherry pickers all the time, lights back here to have a feeling of distance, to have a feeling of natural light. So what happens if the light's back here and you want to move more light, so you get, want to get more light back here in the wall, you got to move the old cherry picker. Now we all know what that involves. By taking the light really close, you got more control of moving it easily, but you still have the feeling that lights are really far away. That's because the lights here on the bottom, it's going all the way up, and actually our lights right here, right now, back here right now, like a virtual light source, and it's lighting in, so you have less fall off. So your natural effect is there, your actors can move around with having the feeling of getting sourcey, you're getting close to something. So the fall off is based on the original emissive source of the light, and using the inverse square law, you want that light source feeling far away, but we're calculating the full distance yeah. from the emissive to the reflector to the scene. Exactly. That's put in perfect English. Thank you. Yeah. And so, then you've got a whole bunch of choices. Yes. Yeah. You've got four choices. You have diffusion number four, white, then you can go to diffusion number three, violet. You see the room's already sparking up more. It's all about, you know, what was great about working with Christian and Michael Haneke is about uh, keeping the rooms free. That's something obviously we could do before by placing cherry pickers outside, it's nothing new. But the amount of control you have right now, that's new. And that's the most exciting thing, that not these reflectors are going to give you light like Michael Haneke movies, but it's actually really so versatile, NADP can find something for themselves. And that's the most exciting thing for us. So that was diffusion number three. And then we move up the scale, diffusion number two. It's getting more and more brighter in here, of course, because the lights are getting punchier. And then you can go to diffusion number one, black, and it's really punchy, more like a sunny feeling, I'd maybe say. And from there, we start to work. You know, you can combine reflectors, like we have here in the magazine at the back, different ways we use it. Like this is a normal reflection right here. You can do double reflection because only 3% light loss. So you got a real good chance to kind of get your light traveling further, basically. And what's nice here is you can do two light sources together, two reflectors. So what you're creating is your own light source. You've got a soft back here, and then you put a harder reflector inside, so you're getting a punchier light and a soft light. This is still a prototype. It's eight years of work to get there where we are. Then, of course, you just can place your light source parallel to windows and take reflectors to light inside, and the ground control is great because having a reflector here and the light down here means no cabling up there. It's an easy way to do it. Gotcha. So what's the smallest size? I mean, are you seeing, the, are these demo only, or are you seeing things no, this small like on set? Kit. This is like a play kit. You can use it from there. So uh, people on set are using reflectors this small? Yeah, you hide it behind tables, chairs, you know, whatever you need to do to get some sparkly light into the faces. And uh, you can move up all the way to scale if you want to move over here. So this is like what we call the C-Kit Drive. It's because it's got wheels. So we got them in the seven. We saw them before. The small ones, 15, 25, and 50. So it's lightweight to work on the set. This is great for a grip shop, we got something to carry as well. This is the biggest one, yeah. the kit. We got 50 centimeters, we got meter. The thing with the meter reflector is, this is, it's open, is this has to withstand wind, right? So yeah. when you're shooting outside, so with the thing, what do you do with reflectors? So we really put a lot of energy uh, getting it really rock steady and solid. So this is like rigging pipes, so you really can rig off to truss if you need to do so. You've got holes 
that you can do with ropes. You've got nice round corners all the place because obviously these reflectors work inside as well. So you just gotta really take care of safety. It was a big thing about what we were doing. So in terms of safety, you have a reflector and to mount it, we made a C-wheel, came up with this like about two years ago. And you put it in here, you slide it in, you fix it. So this has been so good, we've had copycats, which we're really proud about because that shows that we've been doing something right. Let's just give you a feeling for it. This is fixed good. It goes up to 3G force. We tested everything. You can mount on car trailers. 50, you can go up to, I'm mean, back. It goes really cold, really warm. <laughs> Not to go into Celsius. Yeah. And uh, this is like a breaking point. It can break if the stand falls over so the reflector doesn't get harmed. But you can replace it, of course, with aluminum as well. So it's all about security and precision down to the detail. That's what the last eight years of work have been all about. In North America, are there rental houses that are stocking this already? Right now, everything's run off PBNS. Gotcha. in LA from Toby Sally okay. and from there people are starting to use it we've got a kit now in New York and s s we're slowly spreading really carefully finding guys who are really interested in it women of course as well and then yeah we go from there and yeah. then uh, in addition to that mm -hmm. uh, looking at this what would be like a starting price point I'm an NDDP I'm thinking about like sort of my beginning yeah. kit this is like a starter kit right here that we have and it's that's what we sell out for people just to give it a try and this comes like at $500, so it's not really a big thing. Oh, that's really yeah. not that big a thing yeah. at all. It's a nice thing, it's packed, you get a feeling for it, you can start to play with it. From there you can move up to the kits, to the to the bags, yeah, you can go from there. And Fantastic. Way of how do you want to use it. And you can always go onto our homepage, we're posting what we're doing right now, on Facebook and Instagram, the movies we're shooting, mm -hmm. and at the same time we've got a forum, so if people got questions using the system, we always answer. Three gaffers of us, hey, I'm doing this shoot, how I'm going to do this, we answer. We're there for everybody. That's great. All right, yeah. well, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the yeah. 4.7. Yeah. So it's a really even, perfect, smooth light source. If you look up there, it's really important that the light source that you're using is smooth. And you don't have any color fringes on the side. And this is an LED. It's a really high output. So if you take a reflector into it here, and you see, and if you look at the bottom of the shadow, see how soft it is? And this is only from a 15 by 15 centimeter light. This is where you get control over diffused light, because now you can pan it around. And it's diffused. That's something we couldn't do up until now. And it's really nice. I really like this stuff. Yeah. And it's That's also gorgeous. Nice. And it's also, you know, it's not about just working like this. It really works well also if you do your standard setups the way you're used to and using this in complementary, just doing the fine touch up for faces or whatever you need to do. So it's not as restricted as Christian, for example, uses it. That's, of course, the inventor behind it. He's pushing the limits all the time, which, of course, we're doing too. Yeah. It also seems remarkably power efficient. I mean, we've got one LED. Yeah. It looks like it's probably an LED that you might be able to just wall plug. I'm not you sure can. on its of power. You can. Of course you can. Yeah. So it's a wall pluggable LED that you yeah. could theoretically use for yeah. a tremendous volume of your lighting exactly. setup and combined because you can get a couple of reflectors in that same beam at once, right? Yeah, you do. Sometimes you got to be careful. It gets funky if you do too many because then you just lose control. So I've been trained a classical way of lighting. I came up in the normal way of, you know, working as a gaffer. So I usually do one window, one light, one reflector. And then, of course, I start to add. I want some sunny spots, some punches, then I go into it. But I'm trying to keep it always as simple as possible because for me, it's all about not spending time setting up the light, but actually lighting. So the more easier my setups are, the faster I can change stuff and the more chance we got you know, to play around, basically. And that's what gets us the quality that you see in the movies that Christian does. He never says, let's do this, he says, let's try this. Which means for me, I had to learn this, to be humble enough to say, I don't need to know. I've got enough time, because the equipment is so streamlined, that I can change it if I want to. And that's what brings the quality, actually. Because I'm not saying I'm a professional, it has to be this way, bam, 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 and we're finished. It's so versatile, so lightweight, push it left, push it right. You've got so many changes happening at the same time, and that's where the quality comes from. Jacob, thank you so much. I'm like very excited. It was a real awesome. pleasure. You too. Thank you. So uh, this has been Charles Hain at the Light Bridge at NAB Show 2018 for No Film School.